Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's your boy right here, Tony, with stories written by a current prisoner. Just check, just kicking it right here with my homeboy, Muhammad, and the Muhammad Onward Project. You know, go ahead and check it out. Hit that subscribe button, and most definitely hit that like button. You, me and my boy right here are fitting to collab once again. You have a prepaid call from an inmate at the California Institution for Women, Corona, California. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, say or dial 5 now. Thank you for using... Hi, Jenna. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing good. Okay, hi, my name is Janice Jaycott. Um, I'm looking for pen pals, people to write, um, meet good friends. I'm looking for um, any legal assistance that might be able to help me. Um, I fall under the felony murder law, 1437. Um, I went to court on it and was shot down in 2021. Um, so I'm looking for any uh, further assistance for that. And um, yeah, thank you. Anything would be help helpful. What's your nationality? I'm white. Were you ever part of any gangs, groups, or organization, or an associate? No, I was an associate. Um, I hung out and ran for the test uh, with a gang. Uh, yeah, it wasn't good. Um, would you want to elaborate, like, or this, or is they just a regular um, street gang? No, they're actually a, a Mexican gang from La Puente. Uh, they're, they were called Blackwood Street. Okay, where are you from out here in the streets? Um, I grew up in La Puente, California. Can you elaborate uh, briefly how it was like growing up there? Um, it was rough growing up. We, uh, I grew up in a pretty much poor neighborhood. Um, it was just me and my mom living in an apartment complex. Um, there was a lot of gang activity around me. Um, uh, in my household, uh, my mother used um, uh, So um, I had a pretty rough um, childhood. What year are you incarcerated for and how long is your sentence? Incarcerated for accessory to murder. Um, my sentence was 17 years, six months to life, but I've been down uh, 25 and a half years now. Um, I haven't met board's um, qualifications because I've been in trouble getting 115s and uh, not following behavior. Where are you currently incarcerated at? Uh, and um, if I'm not mistaken, um, you were in like a a prison documentary, correct? Yes, I was. I was wanna... in um, lockup, a uh, woman in prison, in 2000 and in 2005. Okay, you want to um, tell us a little bit about that? So I was in a documentary called Lock Up for Women, and they recently interviewed me because I was the youngest inmate to hit prison, and so they wanted to ask me questions about uh, my perspective of growing up in prison, um, how I viewed women's relationships, um, the medical, they asked me about how the medical system worked, and I told them I thought that they were pretty fair, and... Um, they pretty much kept up on our medical. If we had a complaint, they usually answered us within 72 hours. Um, I told them I started being with women, um, looking for affection, for an extension. Uh, I let them know that staff are usually always um, appropriate. Um, of course, you have a, a few, you know, bad apples, but um, it, it wasn't. Um, so bad. They had a lot to offer, a lot of classes, vocations. Um, they have a lot of um, self-help groups. 
they really have a lot to offer in terms of if you want to better your life, better yourself. Um, there's just many things you can sign up for. Um, I was a part of janitorial services, which, you know, um, clean floors and wax them, strip them and wax them. And it's something I found I was really good at and I enjoyed doing. So I kind of stepped to that and graduated. Um, uh, yeah, it was, it was a great documentary. Um, it kind of showed, you know, my living area, how it was an eight-man cell with four bunks. Uh, you had lockers. Um, you know, you work, you have a job. Uh, I don't know, that's about it. Okay, when you first got sentenced, how you feel about it? And when you first went to prison and hit the main line, what was your mentality? Uh, when I first got sentenced, um, I was overwhelmed, terrified. Uh, I was sentenced to uh, CYA, but they had rejected me um, because of my age and the crime. So I went straight to prison at 17 years old. Um, I was like almost 18. I think I was almost 18. I was 17, almost 18. Um, so I hit the main, I hit... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. I hit a yard and, uh, was terrified. I was just a baby. Um, there were people there that helped me. Um, I remember this one lady, uh, I don't know her real name, but her nickname was Smiley. She was a big, small lady. And she told me to get to know my Title 15 book. And... That was all the rules and regulations of the prison. And um, it really helped throughout the years. Um, yeah, but I was scared. Okay, let me ask you this. Um, do you feel like you got railroaded and how? Well, here's the thing is my actions led up to a young man losing his life regardless if I pulled the trigger or not. Um, so I definitely feel that I did deserve time. Um, the amount of time they gave me, um, I know I don't think I deserved. I don't think I really deserved the life sentence. I think the 17 years, six months would have been sufficient for my actions in the role that I played in my crime. So I would say Maybe I was a little bit railroaded. Um, I definitely, you know, I had a public defender and he had me sign my plea bargain before my parents even came into court, um, which I was really blindsided. I didn't know. I was really kind of coerced into taking the deal. I was pregnant, scared, um, and he really should have waited till my parents were there to go over it with me. So. Yeah. Can you um, elaborate a little bit on um, on the type of drama that uh, that goes on in the women's prison? Yeah, there was a lot of uh, gang fighting. Um, there was a lot of couple fighting um, over, you know, females being with, you know, different females. Um, there was a lot of drug drama. There's a lot of, a lot of drugs in prison. Um, so there's always drama behind that. Um, it's just, it's, you're locked up, but nothing's off limits. So there's drama pretty much about everything. Okay, what's the penalty behind uh, um, these cat fights and, and things of that nature? Well, the is you get a 115 and you can lose anywhere from 30 to 90 days. Okay, what do, would you have to say to the, the youth, um, the youngsters out here that's uh, involved in gang activity or thinking about joining gangs? Well, I would say to definitely use your mind, be your own person, don't follow anybody. Um, Know that riding in the car or just riding along with a person um, can get you in trouble. If they do something, it could fall on you uh, just equally as it falls on them. Uh, really know your
to try to know your self-worth and uh, listen to your parents. Um, they're telling you for your own good. Um, not because they're trying to be a boss of you or trying to order you around. They're really looking out for your best interest. I wish I would listen to my parents. Um, and really stay away from the drugs and the games. They're no good for you. Nothing good can come of it. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. When I was uh, 19 years old, I was introduced to her. And from then on, it took over my life. So I was about 40 years old. And it just consumed me for years. Uh, I would get so strung out and so ugly at times. Uh, I would work my family and my parents for money. Um, any pen pals I had, I would, you know, manipulate them out of money. Um, I was just a horrible, I wasn't a bad person, but I was a horrible addict. And, uh, yeah, it just, it really just took over my life. And I've been clean for about two years now. Uh, I can't see myself ever going back, looking back. Um, I don't have no desire to be now, um, but it's something that, you know, drugs are very real in prison, and heroin is something that is very, very addictive, you know, you're very addicted to, and it's uh, like an independent drug, it makes you depend on it, and you guys like, need that next fix, and uh, yeah, it was just it was really horrible, you know, something you don't want to do in prison. I could have been home years ago if I didn't have so many dirty and write-ups for, you know, using drugs and uh, bringing it into the institution. And um, there was this one time, which uh, I still cry about it. Uh, I was on a visit with my son, and uh, me and my son were at the table playing Jenga, and one of my sons came up, and asked me if I could bring, you know, help bring in a package. Um, so I said yes. And I told her that I didn't want to do nothing in front of my son, like wait till he got up and went to the soda machine or, you know, did some things. So her and her, her family sat with us at the table and we were all playing in the jingle. And before I knew it, her son-in-law pulled out a package and set it right in front of my son. I grabbed it so fast and put it in my pants. Uh, I was so mortified. Because I knew right then and there that we were going to go to jail, we were getting arrested. And sure enough, the cops went out and they arrested me in front of my son. They put cuffs on me, and as the instantly I see tears roll down my son's face. And it's just a. Uh, a bad, horrible experience that I will regret for the rest of my life. Um, me being so desperate for drugs that I actually I jeopardized my son and I put him through something that he should have never had to see. It's just, you know, drugs are really bad as they're real. And when you're addicted, you know, they call it a disease. And I very well believe that it is a disease. You know, it just completely takes you over, mind, body, and soul. And, yeah, it's something that I would definitely, definitely urge and beg kids to not to do. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Just that kids really, you know, kids are really um, older now these days and white, wiser. And I would just say really... Um, Try to be themselves and not follow anybody. To really go with their gut instinct. If the gut is telling them no, it's wrong, don't do it. To really listen, really listen to their gut feeling, their gut instincts, because that could be really telling them the truth and it could be really helpful for them to stay out of trouble. You have 60 seconds remaining. Okay, I would like I would like to thank um, everybody listening. Um, and I, I definitely hope uh, they take heed to what I'm saying and definitely
only be their own person and not follow nobody.